Well, what we have done is to uh, replace uh, the human heart uh, with a completely mechanical device. The world's first heart transplant has been performed. Medical history has been made in South Africa. It was really heartbreaking at autopsy to see uh, um, how beautiful this heart looked. It uh, was normal in size. How long do you plan to leave the device in the body? Only long enough to get a transplant. I just can't wait to get started, honestly. <laughs> I never get to talk about this stuff, right? So my name is Lambros. I am a fifth year medical student from Greece, currently studying in uh, Cyprus. And um, Dr. Kule was uh, and is an indirect mentor of mine. Obviously, I never met the man. He died when I was very young. But I was introduced to his work by his book, 100,000 Hearts, by my father, who's actually a cardiac surgeon. He was his one of my direct mentors, obviously. And um, it was, I think, the summer of 2019. I was a second year medical student about to enter third year. And I've never been, I've never seen a cardiac operation myself. I, and everything I knew about cardiac surgery was through the words of my father. And uh, he, he, he gave me this book of Dr. Kule, 100,000 Hearts. And uh, I, I started studying it and reading it. And I was very, very impressed by this man, right? I was very impressed by his moral codes, the way that he handled life and all of the events that occurred to his life, the way that he cycled around them and he went through, it was very inspiring to me. I very I think that he was a very disciplined man. I admired his, his work ethics, his confidence, his courage to operate on an era in which the mortality rates were so high in cardiac surgery, he really had an attitude and the mindset of a winner. The fact that he took what he loved and just brought it to the next level by taking, taking the initiative to become the founder of the Texas Heart Institute, this center of excellence. This, this was very, very inspiring to me. And also, I think he was a man that, and all of the pioneers actually in this field back in the day, in that era, they didn't let their emotions control them. There were men that really controlled their emotions and I think Dr. Kule was a man that controlled um, his emotions. The fact that he had the courage to operate again in that era in which the mortality rates on those operations were so high. Um, I know from the experience of my father that it is devastating to lose a patient in those days now, which they lose like less than 1% of patients they operate on. And back in the day, um, to be subjected in that huge mortality rates and the uh, seeing that much death in front of you must have been devastating. But these people continue to evolve and pioneer in this field. So this was very, very inspiring. Um, it's difficult to uh, make uh, uh, predictions and prognosis if you've not had previous experience. Yeah. Uh, but I would say that um, I'm <coughs> sure that he is going to um, live longer than he would have lived without the operation. I can't say how many months or how many years, we'll just have to see. This era raised huge ethical dilemmas and questions when it came to cardiac transplantation. But we know that Dr. Kule was, of course, the first American surgeon to successfully transplant a human heart. He was the first to implant a total artificial heart in a patient. And all of those operations came with those huge ethical dilemmas that were raised. It, 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 it came to those people, Dr. Kule, Dr. Christian Barnard, and many other pioneers in uh, this field to describe and introduce the common population to the concept of brain death. They, they had to explain to the people that in an unfortunate event, event in which the brain of a patient is irreversibly damaged, it is okay to go ahead and donate his organs to another individual. And uh, it was really actually the heart that led to those ethical dilemmas being raised because there were liver transplantations and transplantations of other organs before heart transplantations. But I think that the, the heart is a very romanticized organ and this is why all of the heads were turned to those people and there was more weight on their shoulders. So the fact that he navigated through this and excelled in this field um, through all these difficulties was very, very inspiring to me. We were, we're not in this uh, primarily uh, to satisfy our curiosity or, uh, say, scientific uh, interest, 
Uh, we're here to try to save this man's life. And if we could get a donor tonight, uh, we would remove this device and uh, uh, do the cardiac transplantation at this time. He was, the, he was the epitome of medical scientist, in my opinion. He inspired people, he helped people. He, he was a pioneer who broke barriers in this field. He was fair, honest. And um, also it is very popular that he had a huge rivalry with uh, Dr. DeBakey. Again, back in the day, those, those surgeons were not open about what happens inside their operating rooms. It was a huge rivalry. And I know for a fact that before Dr. Barnard performed the first successful heart transplant in uh, Cape Town, South Africa, he was actually invited by Dr. Kule in his operating room. Dr. Kule was open enough to invite Dr. Barnard to his operating room to show him some advanced operating principles. So this just shows more about the character of this um, individual. So I was, again, he was one of my indirect mentors. And I think that this is the epitome of a medical scientist, a man who actively helped towards the evolution of the human species. I was in Washington when I read in the morning papers there about the use of this artificial heart that Dr. Kuwait had put in the patient. I was shocked. I didn't know that, that he had done all of this surreptitiously, you see. I didn't know he had taken it from the laboratory. Now, Dr. Cooley had no experience with the artificial heart program at all. He didn't do any laboratory work. He was a good surgeon, but that's all. Dr. DeBakey seemed to show a little interest in ever using it. Dr. Liotta thought he was just uh, wasting his uh, years uh, in a laboratory working with animals and so on, that uh, this would never be tested uh, clinically. And I thought and agreed with Dr. Liotta the time had come to really give it a, a, a test. And the only real test would be to apply it to a dying patient. It, it, it is a very demanding field. It, is, uh, it has a huge psychological toll in the doctor. It uh, takes a huge strike in the, the personal time of the doctor, but it is also very gratifying. And uh, I was in the middle of Dr. Kuli's book and one day I asked my father to enter his operating room to witness this open heart surgery for the first time with my own eyes. I was, I was very curious about it. So he, he obviously agreed. And uh, this was a very life-changing moment for me. I, I entered the operating room and I saw all those machines, those surgeons, the anesthesiologists, the circulating nurses. It was a, a very unique experience that very few people, a very small percentage of people gets to witness. So if that wasn't enough, they, they opened the sternum and I see the pericardial sac, which is this sac that encloses the heart. And then he grabs the diatomy pen and actually opens the pericardial sac and then you just see this beating heart in front of your eyes and it is one of the most beautiful things that I think a, a, a person can witness. The, you know, the heart is an organ which you really get to see its function. You don't get to see the function of many more organs. You don't get to see the function of the liver in front of your eyes or the brain in front of your eyes, but the heart is a purely mechanical organ. You get to see the blood being pumped um, outside of the heart. So this was this was an amazing experience to see the heart in front of me. When, when I left the operating room, I came to the realization that most people would never get to see what I just saw. And uh, it was a, true, a truly wonderful experience. So I, I, I needed to find a way to introduce this to, to more people. I needed to find a way to show more people uh, this, this beauty of cardiac surgery. I, I grabbed my camera up entered the operating room and started to film everything that happened in the operating room from a medical student's perspective always, right? So I filmed the, the surgeons being scrubbed in, the nurses, the tools, the machines, everything. And uh, we started uploading those videos on uh, our YouTube channel and it was an immediate success. People, people loved it. They were very curious and they were also very inspired. Um, as of this day, we have more than two million individuals that have watched our uh, videos. And these are not only, of course, medical students, these are doctors, medical students, patients, enthusiasts, just normal people that were very just interested into what this medical specialty has to show. And um, 
yeah, I think that more people should be educated around cardiac surgery. It's an amazing field and it is very rewarding for obviously the patients, but as well as the doctors who practice it. So this was a perfect modern way to show the world of cardiac surgery to the general population. 100%, 100%. You, you're not meant to be exposed to this stuff. You're not meant to witness this stuff as a human being. This is really extraordinary what happens inside those those rooms. The first time that I saw an open heart surgery and uh, it was this patient, it was an aortic valve replacement, right? So I was 19 years old. I had no prior experience whatsoever in uh, surgery. And uh, it was a point in the operation in which the sternum was open, the patient was intubated, um, his aorta was open. We could see the aortic valve. And I thought to myself as a 19 year old medical student, there is absolutely no way they can bring this man to life after this. His, his aorta was open, the heart was almost open. I 100% I, I thought that there is no, there is no, not humanly possible to bring a patient from that state back to his normal life. But of course it was possible. And uh, as you progress in the, the medical field, as a medical student, you stop looking this as uh, something uh, um, like a thriller, right? Like something horrific. And you see the scientific um, aspect of this. You see a man that suffers from dyspnea, chest pain that has a severe, severely decreased lifestyle undergoing this operation. And after seven days, he's back to his place, normal without dyspnea, without chest pain. And uh, this is very, very rewarding to see. Obviously, the first time that you see those operations, it, it, is, it is shocking. It is very shocking. And, uh, but as the more you get exposed to it, the more you get used to it and the more you, you approach it in a different way. Um, I know for a fact that uh, in ancient Greece, because I'm, I'm Greek, so, uh, we, we were taught this in the schools in ancient Greece, in the amphitheaters, they wouldn't show, uh, death. They wouldn't show like the act of killing someone because they don't, they didn't want people to get exposed to death. They didn't want people to get, um, to, to make killing someone ordinary to those people. So they, they never exposed people in the amphitheaters to death. So the more you get exposed to something, the more normal it becomes. Yeah. <laughs> mm, I have I have two aspirations from uh, my YouTube channel. The first thing that I wanna do is that I wanna, I wanna show people the wonders of cardiac surgery. I wanna, I wanna show the world that cardiac surgery um, let me let me take this from another perspective. Cardiac surgery in the medical corridors right now in the medical school has a relatively bad reputation. It's not a very famous specialty. Um, modern medical students, most of them don't want to follow a, the career of a cardiac surgeon. And uh, it has a bad reputation due again to the long working hours, the decreased time that you have with your family. Uh, patients die, patients still die in this field. And um, people don't like this. They, they want to follow more safe if you would medical fields with uh, simpler operations so I, I really want to show the what what cardiac surgery really is to those people because when you when you see the wonder of life this the, the prime pump inside the the human body and you see how gratifying it is to watch a patient uh, progressively get better after the operations and then in the first checkup after one month or one week after the operation seeing this patient uh, become better and better and brought back to life after this those operations it's so old. one of the best things that you can uh, witness even as a medical student and i'm, I'm not even a doctor and I, I i get those uh feelings from now and so i really wanted to show people what the operations look like um so yeah th this is the first goal that i have with this channel to show medical students uh, what cardiac surgery really is the second goal that i have with this channel is to educate the general population about heart diseases, because heart disease is uh, truly one of the leading causes of death in the modern world. Most of the risk factors of heart disease are very tightly associated with the modern lifestyle, smoking, a high lipid diet, a, the lack of exercise, all of those are modifiable um, disease factors that can be changed, but people are not educated uh, to them. So I really wanted to show them that, uh, and teach them if you will. Well, I'm, not, I'm not in a state to teach, but show people that these are disease mod modifiable characters, uh, factors. And this is what will happen if you don't change your lifestyle. It is a leading cause of death in the modern um, world. And it is very sad.
So it was, uh, I think, one of the last pages of the book. And he said this quote, ask a heart surgeon to name the three, the top three heart surgeons in the world. And he's going to have a hard time naming the two rest. So it was this, this, this mentality, this mindset that he had, that he, he was the best at what he did. He, this mentality of excellence. He knew he was the best. He was very confident. And uh, this really manifested into him being a true pioneer in the field. And uh, I think that this, this confidence that obviously he, it was built up through the years because he, he, he didn't enter medical school as a, of course, confident cardiac surgeon. This was earned through the years. This confidence that he earned through the years, I think this is one of the most inspiring uh, things. The fact that through all those years, he managed to become more and more confident and upscale this in the level of, again, being the founder of the Center of Excellence, Texas Heart Institute. So this, this was very inspiring to me.